<clears throat> to begin, this takes place three days after your previous session. For the first two days, you all were traveling through light speed uh, back towards the hub. Uh, this is after... Uh, you have now re-emerged uh, in the solar system that the hub is in. Uh, on the third day, or actually, the se so the second day leading into the third day, right? So a, a full day passed. Uh, Raphael, Talus, and Jacinto were dispatched on what Caiaphas called an errand. Uh, they were expected to return in one day's time. <clears throat> uh, it is now the third day, and suddenly you feel a little... Uh, oh, I should, I should clarify. Uh, you, or according to Caiaphas, uh, it is going to be slow going for a little bit here, because there is a very long queue to get into the hub currently. Uh, and your starship is currently sitting in the queue. Now in Winter's Grasp has to land because it took damage in the previous fight and it needs some repairs and re refueling, restocking, all of that fun stuff. So basically it's a lot of hurry up and wait right now. <laughs> uh, Alright, it is now the third day. Uh, Talus, uh, Jacinto, and Raphael have been gone for a day. Uh, when you all when you all suddenly feel a uh, shudder run through the ship, um, <laughs> okay, uh, are we? Well, like, what time of day is it? Uh, this will be, it, it's late afternoon for, okay, like, so space time, obviously. You, on, on your clocks, it's the, it's late afternoon. It's late afternoon. <laughs> Hot boxing. <laughs> um... Yeah, it kind of feels like something just hit the ship. <laughs> the the bridge. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm gonna say them. I'm already there since it's just still like daytime. Yep. Um. Is there like like sensors on the like displaying yeah, like, damage um, or anything? Yeah. Uh, so you're sitting up at the front, Felipe, and uh, you're with uh, Zahariel. Uh, Caiaphas uh, was taking uh, his captain's nap when this happens, and uh, a little notification pops up on the sensors that says that uh, a another ship has docked within Winter's Grasp. Yes. <laughs> Scanning. Uh, <yep. laughs> As what uh, Zahario says. Uh, as far as I could tell, it looks like um, another ship has docked? I don't... I didn't know we could do that. Uh, the captain's quarters slides open, and uh, Caiaphas comes walking out, and he's scratching the back of his head. Yeah, he's rubbing his eyes, he's kind of scratching the back of his head. <laughs> Well, I hope it's those three idiots returning on the half of the errand I sent them. <laughs> Scan complete. Processing. It appears that we've been docked by a Star Sweeper class fighter aircraft. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's them. So it's Kai Fast. <laughs> uh, they appear to have docked with the airlock underneath the ship. Scanning. <laughs> Negative. <laughs> Agreed, and Zahario unplugs himself from the pilot's console. <laughs> uh, you walk towards the back towards the barracks. Uh, the airlock is an emergency. Uh, it's an emergency airlock meant in case of catastrophic ship malfunction. Basically, it's kind of like a, an escape pod that you could jettison yourself out through. Uh, you're walking towards the back of the ship, walking towards the airlock. The airlock's set in the floor. When it slides open, and uh, the first thing you see is a giant pair of bullhorns as Jacinto pulls himself and squeezes himself through the airlock. Uh, Raphael comes next. Followed by Talus. And then you see another very large figure appear behind uh, Talus. He pulls himself up through the airlock and he stands up to his full height uh, around the airlock. This man is seven feet tall. But that's not what's most impressive about him. What's most impressive about him is he's about as wide as two men, all muscle. Oh, he wears <laughs> he wears a full body glove suit, and he has a huge uh, satchel bag on his back. Uh, he wears a full body uh, suit glove. Uh, his sleeves are rolled up. On his left arm... Uh, you see a tattoo that says, uh, ear half R, I R, uh, hyphen H A L F A R. Do I recognize that? Or yes, um, Felipe, you would know that ear half R is the former, uh, home planet of the Federation of free stars okay. on his oh, I'm sorry uh, ear half hours on his left arm on his right arm you see another tattoo and it just says 2382 that goes up his right arm he has uh, the sides of his head are shaved and it goes up into kind of like a high and tight and on and tattooed in the uh, shaved part on the right side of his head uh, is a full color picture of the Milky Way galaxy with a series of red X's across oh. various places on the Milky Way galaxy. <clears throat> uh, he looks like this. Yes, he is seven feet tall and as wide as two men. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Jacinto, Roth, and Talos all look at you, and uh, uh, Talos just shrugs and he says, I'll let him introduce himself. <laughs> Trust me, that's the voice Zach was using last session. <laughs> uh, the man steps f <laughs> Yeah, it was. Fantastic. The, the man steps forward, and he offers out his hand to uh, you, Lucky. And he says, Calido Bronzy. Most of my friends just call me fuggin' Bronzy, though. At your service.
Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna reach over and shake his hands. Uh, his hand entirely engulfs yours. <laughs> Wait, how tall? Uh, now that you see him up close, you can tell very obviously that this isn't natural muscle and natural build for somebody like this. He seems to have had some kind of modifications done to him. Um, can I do, like, a science check to see... Yeah, you totally can. Uh... Oh, perfect. Right. Um, uh, from uh, an initial, or just from your quick glance over, you can tell that uh, it is not cybernetic augmentation, but rather gene augmentation that's been done to okay. him. So he's gene spliced to high hell, basically. Interesting, okay. Uh, Caiaphas, yeah, yeah. Yep. Uh, Caiaphas and, uh, uh, Zahariel have now, uh, appeared. And, uh, Caiaphas looks up at, uh, <laughs> Calador Bronzy, and he looks over and he says, Where did you find this guy? <laughs> Bronzy, uh, he finishes shaking Felipe's hand and he looks down at, uh, you. Hold on, Ricardo texted me. Okay. <clears throat> Five, ten, and three quarters. <laughs> uh, Bronzy uh, cracks a smile and he says, I was the dock master over in Chiliad for DeCroy. You, and Caiaphas looks over and says, You took DeCroy's dock master? No, 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 no. I signed up. I couldn't stand dealing with them landlubbers, non voidsmen over in Chiliad anymore. They offered me a good job, said I could help take care of your rust bucket you got here. He gives a bit of a, he gives a whistle and he says, all honesty, for a soul ship, soul republic ship, she ain't that, she don't look too bad. <laughs> uh, yes, I'm sorry, uh, this is Kaya fast talking. Uh, Remember that errand I sent them out on? Well, that ship that we seized from Miss Fisk, we legally could not keep that. So, well, legally, well, okay, so legally we could, by all rights, we took it as a prize. But I've discovered it was a former Federation destroyer. Big warship. And I'd, and I'd rather not have the Federation come looking around here for said warship. That's true. So I saw an opportunity. And he rubs his hand through his hair, runs his hand through his hair, and he says, <clears throat> An old friend of mine, uh, an admiral in the Federation Navy, uh, she runs a scrapyard now for starships. I sold her the ship in exchange for uh, what I assume is the uh, starfighter that has now docked underneath our ship. I wish you the best of luck finding somebody who would be willing to buy that uh, piece of hot gear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. And he's a sugar cube. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm quite I'm quite happy with this trade and uh our new friend, uh Calador was it? Calador or what did you, what do your friends call you? Friggin' Bronzy? Fuggin' Bronzy. Fuck fuggin' Bronzy, okay. <laughs> uh well, there's uh, <laughs> quite a few rooms open, so you can get acquainted with yourself. Uh... <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> well. <laughs> poor choice of words. I I don't mean like uh, 
<laughs> I mean, uh, you can do whatever you want in your room. Oh. That's uh, no business of mine. <laughs> um. Raph, Raph kind of looks around and says, "There's another one." Uh, what? Uh, <laughs> yeah, we got another crew member. Like... Terrible. Absolutely awful. <laughs> <laughs> uh, to answer your question, you see uh, a, a head pop up from the airlock and a very tall, lanky woman appears. Or not tall, but a very lanky woman appears out of the airlock. She is, a, she stands about five foot nine, uh, very lanky. Uh, you know, uh, you immediately notice, however, that her legs uh, are artificial. They are bladed runner's legs, not uh, regular legs. Uh, she is tan of skin with brown hair that falls in a long braid that goes to the middle of her back. She holds a long uh, staff in her left hand, and you see a mini revolver that's attached to a apparatus, uh, so it can extend from her wrist out to her hand on her right hand. Uh, she looks like this, just with uh, bladed legs instead of uh, regular le legs. <laughs> oh, Val. Uh, she appears and she walks up alongside uh, uh, Bronzy and she namastays and she says, Atra Namajira at your service. Nice to meet you. Uh, my name is uh, uh, F Felipe Mauricio Jacinto, but uh, you can just call me Felipe, of course. That's uh, my my first name. Uh, and I um I uh, put my hand out in front of me for her to shake. <laughs> she very graciously offers her hand and shakes it and shakes yours. Right. So. Uh, what are your, uh, qualifications? Uh, Bronzy snorts a little bit and he says, <clears throat> I was a bosun's mate and a marine in the Federation back in the war. Boarded more than a few ships of this type to bash some Soul Republic skulls in. <laughs> I know my way around a ship and how to keep it running, and I'm good in a boarding action if you need it. I'm um, also, as you can probably tell, and he he hits his chest with his fist, and instead of making a normal sound, you hear the dull thud of metal underneath. And he says, as you can probably tell, I ain't all natural. I was a helot, which is what came before the commandos back there, and he shoves a thumb before uh, in Talus's direction. It was either that, or I'd die. So, yeah. I mean, it seems pretty beneficial to you in the long run. <laughs> well, most of the men that had it done to them uh, didn't make it. There's a reason why there ain't too many of us left, and there's a lot more of them commandos rocking around. <clears throat> But, you look like you got a pretty good crew here, and they were telling me on the way over that you run a tight shift, and you, and I, you take a, you're taking on some jobs. So, <clears throat> I'm here to help. And he cracks a big old smile. Uh, Atra, 
uh, Namajira, she namastes again, and she says, I served with the Seoul Republic Special Weapons, Counter-Terrorists, and Anti-Organized Crime in the Seoul System, formerly. I was on the fo Formerly. I prefer to call myself a... A private investigator? Now? I was on the force for six years. I am also qualified in faster than light space, Chase. Well, uh... <laughs> <laughs> now what made you interested in... What made you interested in joining up with us, then? Well, work is rather tight for me right now. And they did promise me that I would be able to uh, fly the new Starfighter. And you are all in need of a pilot, so I believe I could make a decent paycheck now, while I'm here. <laughs> uh, Jacinto cracks his neck and he says, I'm going to bed. <laughs> and Raph, Raph nods and says, Me too. <laughs> and Tala says, Yeah, we, it was a pretty long trip. I'm going to take I'm gonna take nap too. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. All right, well, uh, have a have a nice uh, cat nap, fellas. <laughs> <laughs> it was funnier when I did it, but uh, <laughs> good try, Lucky. Caiaphas looks to the both of them and he nods and he says, "All right, come with me. We'll discuss your contracts on the bridge." And he turns and he uh, starts to walk back towards the bridge with uh, Bronzy. For which one? <laughs> uh, Namajira looks at you and she says, Oh, don't worry, I've made more... Uh, tenuous landings before. It was nothing. And besides, that gives us a much faster way to get aboard the ship than if we were to dock in the cargo. <laughs> yeah, well, as long as it doesn't blow up my ship, I suppose it's fine. I need a drink. <laughs> Zahariel, he's looking around, or they are looking around, excuse me, and Zahariel just kind of turns on his axis, or on their axis, excuse me, and walks back towards the, uh, the bridge. Um, I forgot my name. Oh my god. Okay, Felipe. Felipe. Yeah. Felipe. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I just have a sheet of all the other uh, people on the ship in front of me, and I was like, these aren't my names. Where's my name? <laughs> uh, Felipe goes back to the bridge, and he's gonna, cause that's where um, that's where Bronzy went, right? Yeah, Bronzy and uh, Namajira. Follow Caiaphas and Zahari all back to the bridge. He's gonna try to study Bronzy from afar. Um, cause he's very interested in his um, the like the gene splicing because he knows a lot about like <laughs> cybernetics, but the gene splicing that's different, and he's very interested in that. But he doesn't want to be too obvious about it. Uh, <laughs> um. Okay, sure. Uh, while uh, Bronzy, Namajira, and Caiaphas are discussing contract terms, uh, you you observe Bronzy for a little bit. Uh, you can see the obvious benefits of the gene splicing. He's huge. He's got to. He's obviously he's got to be very strong. But despite how big he is and all that strength, you can tell that he's actually his fine motor control seems to be. Uh, perfectly fine. Like he doesn't have trouble picking up the pen when he has to sign the contract. He 
seems to be able to, can, like, control everything very, uh, well. However, you do catch a very quick glance, uh, when he, uh, is getting up, uh, to go look at the maintenance area, with Sahariel showing him, uh, a small drop of blood comes out of his nose and he wipes it away quick. Uh, it is going to be another day that's going to pass. W would either of you like to do anything in that time? Okay. Uh, you... Yep, you knock on the door, and Caiaphas... Uh, up here, oh, around what time are you going to go do this, I should ask. Alright, sure. Uh, Caiaphas appears, uh, and, uh, you see that he's holding a shot glass with a little bit of whiskey in it. And he looks up at you and says, Yes, Lucky? There's an old saying, Lucky. I don't know if you ever heard it. It's called, uh, it's six o'clock somewhere. <laughs> I know, Lucky. As much as I would like to have Zahari, I'll tap into the bounty board. Look, we can't risk another run in with pirates or anything like that. We need repairs. We're also low on fuel. So before we take on any more jobs, you know, gotta keep the ship running. And, yeah, and this damn line, uh, it's just a whole influx of people coming. Yes. <laughs> You'll be the first to know, Lucky. And he, uh, downs his drink and closes the door. <laughs> mm-hmm. Sure. All right. Felipe? Um, first, I need to know what room uh, our two new crew members chose. What rooms? Um, Bronzy and Namajira chose rooms right next to each other, and uh, I think we went through 1 through 25, right? Yeah. Uh, they're in 9 and 10, right next to each other. Okay. Uh, Bronzy in 9, Namajira in 10. Alright, what's her first name? Atra. Atra, okay, that's okay, perfect. Uh, Aww. if you want to spell, it's A-T-R-A space N-A-M-I-J-E-R-R-I-A. Um, it's, it's our series of months. Actually, we did. It was established in the first, uh, hold on. I have to go back to the first part, because we did actually have a start. Uh, episode, where's episode one? Uh, fuck, where is episode one? There it is. Um... I wanted to say uh, the start was in March of 20... Oh my god. Hold on. 
I have it here. I know for a fact I do. No, you're good. So, it has been... Plus 45. Give me one sec. I can't tell if somebody's calling my name, so if I disappear for a sec. Okay. Uh, it would have been March of 2429 at the very start, and then it was a tr uh, one month travel time, uh, in which case. No, the year 2429. March okay, sorry. 20th. March... It was March... <laughs> okay, wait. Okay, it was March of 2429. It took a month for the... That was when you guys arrived on the colony ship, and the colony ship crashed after a month. So, March, April. Uh... I would say it's probably about the beginning of May, so like May 24, 29. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. It's been about, probably about two weeks total. Like, total, since you've signed on with Caiaphas and all that, so. Oh, you're good. Are we good? Ready? Alright. <clears throat> uh, Felipe, what were you going to do? Um... That depends on what Bronzy and uh, Namajira are doing. Um, Bronzy uh, is, he has been basically in the maintenance uh, area uh, whenever he's not been in his room. So he's been inspecting the maintenance constantly. Uh, Namajira makes her rounds from the... Uh, where she sits and talks with whoever will listen to her uh, to the uh, ship that is attached underneath the uh, uh, Winter's Grasp right now. Okay. Because I don't think Felipe has been around a lot of women. <laughs> um, I mean, well, I don't know. Yeah. But not in like a like a friendly manner, more and so in like a like a clinical scientist manner. So he's not really <laughs> doesn't. <laughs> it just feels different. Um, but I think he would he would go check out the what is the starfighter? Is that the little one, the little ship yep. I just got? Yep. Yeah. So. Oh. I'm gonna go uh, check that out. Sh sure. Uh, you can see the starfighter by the way from the camera on the hull, and you can actually see what it looks like. It, uh, is, it looks like this. Give me one sec. Oh my god. Oh wait, I can just do from here. This one? I believe it's that one. Yeah, this one, okay. It looks like this. It's a lot smaller, and it attach. Yep, and it attaches underneath the uh, the ship. Do the wings fold in or something? Or nope, it just literally just sticks to the bottom of the ship. Okay. It's a. Uh, it's meant for like space travel, so you know, yeah. no need for the wings to fold in or anything like that. Okay. Remember, in Winter's Grasp, it's like huge. It's supposed to be very big. Yes. Or is that would be more equivalent to like, kind of like a jet fighter, I guess, if you can imagine that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, there you go. Okay. Um, is it like accessible? Like, can I go inside? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Alright, I'm gonna hop on in and scope it out. Um, y inside, uh, you can tell that this is, you don't know the make or type of it, uh, but you can tell that it seems to be very, uh, to put it in one blunt word, kind of plain. It's very, uh, militaristic on the inside. You know, no no bells and whistles, any, nothing like that. Just uh, kind of slapped together, and if it works, it works. <laughs> okay. But it looks like it's in good condition and everything? Yeah, looks like it's in very good condition. Alright. Um, inside there is, uh, there is the single pilot's cockpit, you know, the seat up front where the pilot sits. Uh, there is a mini Vivi Horizon Drive, uh, in it, but it, uh, is small and looks like it's only good for, like, maybe two jumps or three jumps total versus, uh, in Winter's Grasp, which can make many jumps. So, this isn't, obviously, it's meant to be carried to some place and then deployed, not like yeah. it's going to jump from system to system. Uh, there is the space for the pilot. There is just enough space for maybe uh, four people total in the back, but it's not, you know, it would be cramped. It's not very, you know, it's it, uh, comfort is not what they're going for here. Four regular human people, yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The, the the squeeze with Bronzy uh, and Jacinto had have been kind of tight on the way back. Okay. So, oh. five total, including the pilot. So, one in the pilot and four in the back. Okay, and where is the airlock? Like, where is this docked? So, it's docked yeah. underneath the winner's grass. Well, like, you basically you climb down, uh, like, into the airlock. Yeah, but is and... it, like, under, like... Because I have a little map drawn out, so it's like the bridge, the yep. maintenance place, the mm -hmm. barracks, and the cargo. So is it like underneath, it, just like the middle area, or? Oh, it's underneath the barracks. The barracks, okay. Yep. Cool. Think of it as like, like I said, it's like the emergency, like if the ship's going down, you, you take mm -hmm. this, this basically this escape pod. But now it's blocked because there's a fucking ship attached to it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Cool. All right. Anything else you would like to do? Um. Yeah, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. See, I'm gonna go talk to Bronzy and see what that fella's doing in the maintenance room. Sure. Yep. Uh, his name is Talus. He fought for the Federation of Free Stars against the Soul Republic. And he fought at the Battle of, uh, or well, he fought in the War for Talarn Prime. He fought in the Battle of the Iron Pass and the Death of Hope. Yep, Talarn. T-A-L-L-A-R-N. Yep. Iron Pass and Death of Hope are his significant battles. Alright, perfect. <clears throat> uh, sure, yeah, you uh, m go into the maintenance area, and you find Bronzy is, uh, he's inflecting, or it, blah, 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 inflecting, inspecting the deflector system uh, aboard uh, in Winter's Grasp. So he's just kind of running through some diagnostics with it. Uh, he's holding a data slate in his hand, but, like, he can literally just hold it, like, in the palm of his hand, and, like, he very gingerly, like, uses the tip of his finger to, like, scroll through it while he's, uh, he's running these diagnostics. And he looks over at you when you approach, and he cracks a smile, and he says, Hey, Felipe! Or, that's not Bronzy. Hey, Felipe! <laughs> ah, so you're the braids and the brawns, huh? Well, I can't say that I know all the ins and outs, but I was a bosun's mate 
so I had to run a lot of the general maintenance on ships that were a lot bigger than this one. <coughs> oh well, how she's fair? How uh, how how she ferried after our last battle? Okay. Well, deflector system took some damage, and he's scratching at the five o'clock shadow. I forgot to point out he has a five o'clock shadow on his uh, on his face. He's scratching at the five o'clock shadow on his face, and he says. Well, deflector system took some damage. Definitely gonna have to replace a few of those panels. I wanna run the Vivi Horizon Drive through a couple cycles, cause she was, from what I could tell, it's she's fine. She's just an older model, so she kind of hiccups every now and then. I think I could get us a little bit more speed out of her. But other than that, uh, not too bad of a ship. Armed to the teeth, which I like to see that. Kayafas has definitely made some. Uh, Pretty impressive improvements to her. I mean, I would probably attribute a lot of that to uh, Zahario, but yeah, yeah, true. He's a uh, he, they, I don't, they. <laughs> I can't really yeah. tell if I'm being honest. <laughs> uh, they's th good. They's good. I'll go with they. They uh, they haven't talked to me much, but uh, they're kind of interesting. They seem to know their stuff, too. Definitely, yes. Uh, I mean, you seem pretty knowledgeable yourself. It's, uh... I always enjoy having a like-minded, uh... ship. Everyone... So far, everyone else on the crew is a little bit of a... I mean, meathead, you know? <laughs> well... I mean... Like I said, I don't know all the ins and outs. Just a little, just uh, what I picked up over the years. You learn a lot working a scrapyard or uh, serving aboard a cruiser. And he uh, kind of runs his hand along the uh, he runs his hand along the uh, couple of the computers, and he kind of he gives a give a little gives a little bit of a kick to the uh, the system. And he says, "Ah, there we go. Now she's running a little bit better." Let me know if you ever need any assistance. I've gotten a bit acquainted with things. Well, for sure, for sure. I can't handle all this myself. <laughs> Definitely use the help every now and then. Yeah, of course, I'll be, uh... I look forward to working with you. Uh, he nods at you, Felipe, and he says, You too, Felipe. Nice talking with you. And then we fade to black. <laughs> Alright. Where... Okay, so... Anything else? I'm good. Alright. So, uh... Lucky is hanging out, just kind of watching the stars right in their journal, right? Alright. Felipe, where are you at? Um... I probably made my way back to the bridge, um... In the... The co-pilot seat next to Zahario. <laughs> okay. Um, it's getting a little bit later in the afternoon. Uh, and Felipe, you've noticed every now and then that Zahario has been kind of... you. They have their hood up, so you can't see their head. Uh -huh. But, like, the, the robes have kind of twitched every now and then. And finally, uh, Zahario disconnects himself from the pilot seat. And Zahario turns and looks at you, Felipe. And they say, Query... Would you be interested in providing me assistance in exchange for compensation? Yeah, of course, anything. There is a matter I must discuss with Caiaphas. Will you please wait one moment? Sure thing. Zahariel uh, walks over to Caiaphas's door and doesn't even bother knocking. They they just open the door and step inside. Fantastic. <laughs> A few minutes pass, and then Zahariel reappears and walks over uh, back over to you. And Zahariel says, Caiaphas has granted me permission to take care of this matter. Processing. 
However, I believe we will need a little more help. Uh, what about that new guy, uh, Bronzy? Zahariel nods, uh, their head and says, I believe they, or he, could provide some assistance. However, I also believe crew member 1031 designation Lucky could also provide assistance. Oh, I mean... They are on the bridge. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Oh, so you're eavesdropping. Uh huh, well, I guess that makes sense. You were raised in a barn. <laughs> uh, uh, time, time will tell. <laughs> oh, God. Query. Uh, would you be interested in assisting in this matter? <laughs> Processing. Twink explanation not found. <laughs> Disregarding. Yeah, you can go ahead. Uh, that's, that's good. That's fine. I am... Willing to tap into Caiaphas's personal account to pay you. This is good. I shall explain the matter at hand. And, uh, Zahariel, uh, reaches, uh, into their robes and they pull out a small little uh, disc and they put it on the table and they extend one of their uh, metal fingers out and they tap the, uh, the disc and you see a figure pop up uh, she looks like uh, a lot like Zahariel as a matter of fact she wears the same uh, lawn robes she's very heavily augmented, but you can still tell that she is female, uh, based upon her, uh, shape of her body. And she speaks in, uh, a little bit more of a humanized voice than Zahariel, and she says, Zahariel, 99, we require assistance if you could provide it. The Ark Majesty has suffered an outbreak of heresy and madness. Please, Zahariel, bring whatever help you can. And then it cuts off immediately right there. And Zahariel looks up at you all, and he, or they say, that is Gabriella 32, a former colleague of mine. She is aboard the Ark Majesty. To put it in your terms, it is the closest thing I have to a home world. It is a colony ship that is filled with the faithful of the motive force. Processing. <laughs> Disregarded. Yes, <laughs> that is a, a home of the motive force where many of the faithful live together.
It is a colony ship similar to the one that you all arrived on. Madness and heresy. Processing. Unfortunately, I do not know how to correctly answer this for to commit heresy in the motive force one would have to break one of its tenets which is impossible they form their hands uh their metal hands into a cog and they put it over uh their chest probably where their heart is <laughs> And they say, to achieve as close to becoming one with the machine as possible, but to never let the machine control the human part of you, we seek to replace our flesh with metallic parts, but to maintain what you would call the human soul and conscience. In simplest terms, yes, if one were to allow, say, an abominable intelligence to control their mind instead of the human mind controlling the machine. Sure, it's going on in the ship, but I'm sure whatever it is. I'm Explanation Abominable intelligence is an artificial intelligence that has become corrupt and decided to supersede, destroy the human mind. <laughs> Processing. That movie is highly inner inaccurate, but yes. Hey, well, uh, I guess. I mean, yeah. Let's let's go do let's go do the thing. Processing. I am capable of subtracting, scanning, 2,000 credits from Caiaphas's account without his knowledge. <laughs> uh. <laughs> yeah, sure, what this guy said. As much as I would like to go right away, or with what we have here, I believe it would be a wise, smart decision to bring along either crew member designation 1032 Calador Bronzy, or crew member designation 1030 Scarlet Fisk as well. Boop. 
I uh, that's you don't really, but uh You know what? I would prefer we bring uh we bring Bronze along. I think he would be a wonderful addition and he has experience in I mean certain aspects of technology and he has experience in boarding. I think he'd be a wonderful asset. Yeah, but you yeah, and you trust her? Um... I wanna... <laughs> Can Bell make a persuasion check? Sure. Oh, are you gonna intimidate me? <laughs> you can do either one. Oh god. Uh, well. uh while you're waiting, Patrick, what room did uh Scarlet take? Um I forgot. she yeah. she took the one that you uh stripped a bunch of the metal out. Or no that, oh, that, god. Uh, that Victor took a bunch of the metal out <laughs> Whoever did it. <laughs> what one of you <laughs> scraped a bunch of that was, that was me, but she doesn't know that. <laughs> yeah, because she was like, what the hell happened to this room? I suppose we could have that be a wisdom saving throw to see if uh, you can resist being interrogated or intimidated, okay. excuse me. So, DC 12. Felipe's <laughs> 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 um, like ear flicks and he. Um, Unsheaths his claws and like pokes it in Lucky's chest and is like, <laughs> to your chest? Yeah. What do you mean? I mean, it looks very silly because I'm like reaching up, <laughs> reaching up to poke your chest. Um, but uh. Yeah, I'm like, listen here, you equine freak. <laughs> <laughs> Just because someone has a little bit of cybernetics in them, or sometimes a lot, that doesn't mean they're untrustworthy. Like, you gotta get with the times. <laughs> Just stuck in the pat. Ugh. You know what? Why don't we bring a compromise and bring, and bring uh, Atra? Uh, Zahariel breaks in real quick and they say, I apologize, but Atra will already be accompanying us. She has oh, to pilot. Just... <laughs> oh, uh... <laughs> Okay, deal. I I won't say that. <laughs> uh, so uh, I I turned to I turned to Zahariel and I said, so uh, I mean, let's get let's go ask Bronzy then. It seems like uh, he'll be joining us if if he so pleases. I will go to Atra to help prep the ship. You will grab crew member designation one zero three two, Calador Bronzy. 
I need to start writing all those designations. Yeah. <laughs> That's just a Zahariel thing. Uh, is Bronzy in the maintenance room? He is. Alright, I'm gonna go over and ask him. Nami Namajira. Okay. Uh, you find Bronzy, uh, is in the, um, maintenance area. Right behind the bridge. Uh, he is, uh, doing a cycle of the Vivi Horizon Drive when you enter. Uh, hey bud, you, uh, you got a minute? Or, I guess, probably longer than a minute if you agree to what I'm about to ask <laughs> you. He looks up and he kind of cocks an eyebrow. I mean, says, yeah, sure, what you need, Felipe. And uh, he powers down the Vivi Horizon Drive. And he uh, crosses his arms across his chest. Um, listen, so Zahariel has a mission for us. And, uh, I mean, it, 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 it's paid if, if that's what it needs to grease your wheel. But uh, uh, they... Some of their friends are in trouble and... Uh, uh, so we're gonna take, uh, the ship, and, I mean, <sighs> Lucky's coming with, and we're gonna do a bit of a, I don't know, I think a rescue mission? It's kind of unclear, but something like that. Alright, I'm in. Hell yeah. Okay. Th good. <laughs> Just give me a moment to go get my boarding stuff. Yeah, of course, sure thing. Uh, Bronzy stomps out of the, uh, well, for him it's stepping, but for, yeah, for you all it stomps. He stomps out of the, uh, maintenance area towards his barracks. Hey, enjoy yourself. <laughs> Suppose we can wait a moment until she comes back. How tall is the, um, the passenger area of the Starfighter? As in, like... Like the ceiling height uh well let's see it's attached it, it'd probably be about like 15 feet probably it's pretty big okay it's, you know it's comfortable enough like you won't have to duck down or anything like that i was just thinking more because i don't know how big lucky is um he's seven feet tall but he's a, he's a draft horse so he's really long okay <laughs> He he can fit though. I I'm trying to my set my sense of scale is still a little off, but like it it's big. Like you know, starships are mm -hmm. big. They they can be a lot bigger than you know, in atmosphere stuff. Okay. God, my notes are so messy. <laughs> Go back to this crew. Yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> So many arrows. What I would like to do, if I could find it, is is maybe just find somebody who could just do a commission of like a map of the of the ship. Mm -hmm. What I started, let me actually see if I can probably find a picture of it. But what I started imagining the bridge as is. Hanging Oh, I just found a very simple system for this. For these crew member designations. It's gonna go in order of when you all arrived. I also, I'm pretty sure I set a number for what route that I, um, that I ransacked, but I don't, I don't have it written down. I think it was like 25 or something, it was like one of the really far back ones. <laughs> okay, let's see if I can find it. I can't. 
not okay. That's fine. That's okay. But um, in the new Shira on Netflix, they have a spaceship. That's the bridge I started. Just got a nice big window on front. Back. Okay. Sorry, I'm. I have to text somebody real quick. Give you. Alright, <clears throat> so. Uh, right. So, you're back. Uh, Bronzy agreed to help. Uh, what are you all bringing for this mission? Perfect. Felipe? Um... Um... Okay, Bell. Ah... <laughs> uh, oh yeah, I'll just take... Uh, take my regular stuff that I have. Oh, I'm gonna leave my my drug USB in my. I don't need that on me. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. Yeah, just my regular stuff. So. No, it's, it's, it's something else. But yeah, okay. <laughs> Got a little backpack on my on my back. Got my tools in there. My computer. back towards the ship and yeah Zahario sees you uh you see Zahario uh Bra and Bronzy uh, are around the airlock and Namajira is climbing down now Zahario to uh, uh you have not seen this before on him but Zahario has attached uh what looks like four long extra arms to his back okay and uh he looks, or they look up at you. I keep saying he. It's because I use a male voice. <laughs> they look up at you when they approach. And, uh, they, uh, or they look up at you when they approach. And, uh, the, the hood, because I saw their hood up, like, the hood of their robes, uh, nods a little bit. And instead of climbing down the ladder, Zaharia like spiders down with Hell the. Hell yeah! <laughs> with their forearms, yeah. Uh, Bronzy, on the other hand, uh, you see that although he wears his full body gloves uh, suit still, with uh, he, he's not wearing any extra armor. Uh, he has uh, grabbed a helmet, like a. Uh, uh, spacer's helmet uh, that appear he appears to have modified a little bit because you see a couple extra metal plates hammered into the sides of it but what most stands out about Bronzy uh, he has a what looks like a starship door strapped across his back 
and he cracks a big old smile when he sees you all coming. And uh, he pats the laser pistol on on the left on his left side on his hip, and a long length of what looks like uh, like a steel pipe on his on his right hip. And uh, he looks he, <laughs> he looks at you all and he says. <clears throat> Zahario was telling me about where we're going. Big old colony ship. I know the type. Hold a lot of people. Real big. It's pretty similar to some Soul Republic ships I've been I've ra I've uh, boarded before. <clears throat> now I don't think I have to tell you uh, how to do your jobs. You know all know that. But you need help at all. He takes the long piece of pipe out and he taps the uh, the starship door on his back and he says, "Just let me know. Stay behind me. I'll take the fire for you." Out of character, if you occupy the same space as Bronzy, you count as having half cover. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> he looks down and he says, "Look out below!" And he un <laughs> or he undoes the clasp on the uh, door and he drops it down before he <laughs> himself climbs climbs on down. Uh, like I was explaining to Joe, or, uh, yeah, well, it's old Joe, uh, this yes. is going to be relatively tight space for, or it's going to be pretty tight space for all of you. Um, uh, you are on board the ship, however, and then Atra, uh, she's typing on the council, uh, the front council, and she says, it should not be too long. I'm seeing a couple hours travel time here. And she takes her braid that's been that hangs down like to the middle of her back and she brings it to uh, her front. And now you see that she has a small plug at the base of her neck. Oh fuck yeah. <laughs> she has a small plug at the base of her neck. And she takes a long cord of her own uh, making, or of her own make, that she's attached into the console. And she plugs the cord into the back of her neck, connecting her to the ship. And when you look at her face, you see her eyes go from uh, the brown that they are, the regular brown. They completely black out. And she starts looking around, and she swivels in place, and she says... All right, I will be detaching us momentarily. Please buckle up before we jump to Vivi Horizon space. <laughs> uh, you can f you find some like cargo netting that is like attached to the wall. You could slide yourself into. <laughs> uh, <laughs> In a similar situation, Bronzy is also just gripping as hard as he can to, uh, like, the side of the, uh, the, the ship, basically, or the side of the cargo hold. Uh, Felipe buckles up. Uh, <laughs> Zahariel plugs themselves into a redundant, like, socket port and just kind of, like, magnetizes himself to the floor of the ship. <laughs> <laughs> with a shutter, the ship detaches itself, and all of your stomachs drop real quick as you go into free free fall for a moment. And then uh, the very powerful engines at the back of the uh, starfighter activate, and in a moment you are speeding away from In Winter's Grasp. And uh, Atra, she's typing out and she's looking all around but you can tell she's not actually looking inside the ship she she she's not looking at anything in particular and she's looking around and she says 
All right, our space is clear. Vivi Horizon Drive powering up, and she is powering up, and she says, we are jumping to Vivi Horizon space in 10 seconds. It should be about a two hour long journey according to the last, or according to the last known location from the message pane. We are jumping to Vivi Horizon space in five seconds. And uh, she presses one final button and like a, uh, uh, like an airplane sticks pop up in front of her and she presses them forward and you jump to Vivi Horizon uh, faster than light speed. <laughs> yeah, it, I, I think I've described before, it, it, it's kind of uncomfortable going that fast at, at first and then it, it, a couple after a couple minutes pass you ease into it. <laughs> Alright, so you have two hours. Is there anything you want to discuss or do in that time? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Bronzy looks over and he says, Honestly, uh, we didn't. Your, uh, colleagues, Talis, Jacinto, Raphael, well, they bought, and he, uh, he ha does a hammer fist to the, to the wall, he says, they bought this ship, uh, from my employer, uh, Mr. Croy, who is the, uh, friend of, uh, your captain, Caiaphas. Well, we had to do an inspection of that ship that they, uh, were trading in. So I offered to buy them all a drink while we waited. Well, one thing led to another. Uh, basically a gang that had been terrorizing uh, the city uh, showed up at the bar. And uh, we had a big old brawl. Bar, bar doesn't allow guns, so there's lots of fists, knives, you name it. It was pretty fun, I gotta admit. Your pal Jacinto pinned a guy down to the ground and was beating on him with his energy knuckles. That was pretty cool. <laughs> Raphael carved up one of them pretty good with his knife. But, there was three of or there was four of us, and there was six of them, so we were outnumbered. And then, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, Miss Namajira over there came barreling out from the corner of the bar with her electro staff and her mini revolver that she had somehow snuck in. She shot one of them in the knee and took the other one down with her staff. She told us, yeah, she told us she had been investigating the game for a while and was getting pretty close to finding the lead or to striking at the leader, but uh, we kind of fucked that up by <laughs> intervening in her investigation. So she, in a manner of speaking, convinced us through, uh, turning us, or through threatening to turn us into the law enforcement, uh, to help her, help her take down the gang leader. We, no, we took him down. Talos blew him up with a grenade. <laughs> Yeah, it was, uh, it was quite a fun time, I do admit, and you know, seeing them, seeing them in action, well, it kind of reminded me of my old days, and I realized I, as much as retire, as much as I was enjoying my retirement, Chiliad, I wanted to get back out here in the space, get my space legs again. Now, Majira came along, cause, uh, like she said, money's a little tight. <laughs> In a way, I guess, but it's more of a, look, when your entire life has been spent around a bunch of professionals who know how to do their work, and know how to do it in the most efficient way possible, that is, running a starship with a bunch of voidsmen, it's just not the same anymore when you're working with landlubbers who never stepped foot on a ship. 
And while I do appreciate what Miss DeCroix did for me, after about 10 years there, I just couldn't take it anymore. I wanted to get back out into the stars. I love it out here. New planets. See the craziest things out here. Oh, there's an ugly side to it. I've seen it. Fought in it, too. But, I like to think that when you're out here, all that kind of stuff, eventually it just don't matter anymore. Because you wander around, you see new places, and you get new memories. <clears throat> Felipe? Anything? Um... Yeah, I'm gonna talk to, um... <laughs> <laughs> no, not... No, not right now. I'm gonna talk to Atra and, um... I wanna ask her about her neck little con her little neck connection. Uh, you... You say that to her, and she doesn't look over at you, or she doesn't look over at you, but she does reply to you. She says, I had it installed when I joined the uh, counter-terrorist force in the Soul System. Soul System, as I'm sure you can imagine, is rather rife with uh, crime. You know, home system of humanity, people, and one of the richest systems in the galaxy. So we have our work cut out for us. This lets me, and she actually points her hand, or she like brings her hand back, she points to him, she says, This lets me tap directly into the cameras uh, on the outside of the ship. And, in a manner of speaking, I can kind of feel the ship in my own body. Or as if my body is the ship. Gives me very fine control over everything. <laughs> that's uh that's pretty that's pretty cool oh yes it has saved my life and ended the lives of those who had threatened it more than a few times does it hurt when you, when you plug in she stops for a second and she thinks and she says not hurt, more... It's overwhelming. I don't know how to describe it. Besides, it kind of feels like I can see and hear and feel much more than I normally can. For example, I know that you are standing... I know exact the exact spot of the ship that you are standing based off of the pressure that your body exerts into your seat. Oh. I can feel that from here. I can also see Bronzy picking his nose at the back. Bronzy. <laughs> and Bronzy looks up and he he kind of he kind of <laughs> he kind of smiles a little bit and says, "I was going to see if I could get away with it this time. She caught me last time too." <laughs> 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 and she uh, goes back and she says although I will say that should the ship take damage I also feel that as well I was just gonna say <laughs> it's it... a risk I'm willing to take yeah It's very cold. It, uh, it always makes the hairs on my arms stand up and runs a shiver through my body. It kind of makes me nervous that... 
Well, I look at it this way. If enough damage has been caused to the ship that would actually kill my physical body, it most likely means the ship is going to explode anyway. So if I can push out, push out a little bit more efficiency, i.e. I can make tighter turns, better gun runs, etc, etc, it's a risk I'm willing to take. Alright, I... yeah. I mean, I guess I don't know you that well, so it's... it's... it's okay. <laughs> oh, Just, it is... Uh, it is okay be careful. for me. <laughs> oh. You don't need to tell me that. I know... I know what I'm doing, trust me. <laughs> Anything else? <laughs> okay. Um, I'd have to send you. Uh, <laughs> I'd have to send you a video clip because it's from, um, I, it, 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 almost exactly, like, the way I've made this light speed is from Elite Dangerous, which is a video game, and a sci-fi, uh, series, but it's, like, think of it like, um, things are moving by, like, really quickly, but, you know, it's space, so there's a lot of, like, just nothing out there, uh, but, like, if you were to see a planet, like, you would see the planet, and it would be kind of like a car, like, like you're going by it really fast in a car. But I'd, I'd have to send, I'd have to send a uh, Elite Dangerous clip. I, honestly, just look up frame, look up frame shift drive from uh, Elite Dangerous, and you'll see, like, a frame shift drive jump, and you'll see exactly what it's like. Mhm. Mm I mean, Lucky would be able to see like planets and like other significant things going by as you're cruising on through. All right, so, <clears throat> um, this entire time, uh, Zahariel has put themselves in low power mode. You can tell by the fact that their eyes are dimmed. But, uh, after a couple hours, uh, their eyes light up again, and, uh, Zahariel looks towards the front of the ship and says, We are arriving! And, uh, uh, Namajira, she nods and she says, Prepare to exit Vivi Horizon Drive. And uh, a moment, yep, a moment passes, and when you exit, it kind of feels like a bunch of icicles are forming across your skin for the briefest of moments, and then it disappears as fast as it as you feel it. And uh, you warp back into regular space, and you hear the. Uh, powerful uh, plasma engines uh, fire up now as the antimatter Vivi Horizon Drive powers down. And Atra says over the sh or Atra says, uh, We have a contact. Yep. Oh, it's big. Definitely a colony ship. But she stops for a moment. What the hell are they doing out here? There's nothing out here. Uh, is this Zahariel still in low power mode? Uh, nope, Zahariel, uh, is in full power, like, up, right, and is, uh, looking towards the cockpit. Well, even if they don't need it, their ship needs a star to refuel off of. There isn't even a damn star out here. Zahariel is... Is this normal? No, it is not. The Ark Majesty has a set course. It has not deviated from this course in 72 standard cycles.
<laughs> uh, Namajiro speaks up and she says, I'm gonna try to hail them and see if I can get a response over the radio. <clears throat> but yes, uh, and Zahario says, the it has not deviated from this course in 72 cycles. <laughs> that is correct. It is an automated system. Somebody would have to purposefully deviate it from the course. Especially bringing it out here. I'm not getting anything on the radio. This is Namajira speaking. Uh, I've pinged him three times now. But just doing a preliminary scan, the ship still has power. Hmm? It's, uh, they, it has power, but it's running on emergency. Emergency lighting and life support are still in place, as is gravity. <laughs> I'd have to get in close. Oh, well that's strange. The docking area is open. Why would that just be open? <laughs> well, yes, I b believe the same thing, if I'm being honest, but... <sighs> that's the only place we can land. <laughs> Zahariel, so, we came out here to find Gabriella and the cult of the motive force and uh, provide them assistance. We must land within their ship. All right, well, hold on. I can tell that I can tell you that there's no guns on the outside at least, so nothing's going to shoot us down on the way in. That's true. All right, hold on to your teeth. I'm going full speed for this one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh she guns it, and your ship. Oh boy. <laughs> your ship is flying. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Bronzy also lurches forward, but he like catches himself, and he's just like you. You swear you hear the ship groan a little bit as he's like oh, tugging God. himself back into place. Uh, Zahario, you hear the sound of uh, uh, mag or like or he magnetizes or they magnetize themselves to the floor. <laughs> <laughs> Felipe never unbuckled himself. <laughs> And, uh, after a minute of going actually ludicrous speed, uh, you feel a change in the gravity uh, inside the ship. It was a little bit lower than normal, but now it feels normal, and you realize you have now entered into the large colony ship. Now, <clears throat> you caught a quick glimpse of it from the outside, but to describe it, the colony ship is two miles long from end to end. Uh, you are entering at about the halfway point here in the docking area. If you remember what the, yeah, uh, if you remember your the original colony ship that you arrived on, that was where like the train, the the tram station was. This is about the equivalent. This is obviously this is, uh, this ship is is massive, but it's still noticeably a lot smaller than the original colony ship you arrived on. <laughs> mm. The atrium, right? <laughs> uh, uh, sh 
she immediately slows it down as she's as you're coming inside, and then she lands the ship. Uh, she unplugs herself from the cockpit of the pilot seat, and she swivels her chair around, and she says, "You'll have to. It'll take a few moments uh, to, as I'm going to have to sit here and radar pulse throughout the ship." And then uh, I will have to exit the ship again and do more radar pulses along the entire length of it to tell you exactly where people are concentrated, if there's any people alive at all. Watch your step when you go out there. Uh, the emergency lighting is on. The main power is out. Uh, Bronzy picks up his shield and he says, Who's ever going out there, I'll go with you. I'm gonna... I'm gonna turn to Zahariel and ask them, there's, uh, is there any way for you to contact your friends, or...? I have been trying. I am getting no signals back across our personal messenger channel. I mean, is it really wise of us to split up? Namajira. Namajira. <laughs> Oh, I will not be going outside. I'm going to replug myself in and do the scan from the ship itself. But it would, but it would be wise to have somebody keep an eye out while I'm doing this. Do you want me to join you? Well, if you say so, and he puts the shield, he plants the shield back down. Uh, yep, go ahead. Yep. Now Majira, uh, extends the, uh, ramp down. Uh, the ramp goes from near the cockpit on down. Uh, outside, uh, in the loading dock. It's, as Namajira said, it's pretty dark. Uh, the emergency lighting is on, which is, uh, red flashing strobe lights. <laughs> from, that are just, that are descended from the ceiling, and they're just kind of flashing around in a circle. Um, the area you're in, um, it's pretty hard to see, but it's but it's a docking area. It's a very wide open area. Uh, curiously, there doesn't uh, seem to be any other ships in the docking area here. Uh, yes. If you, if you remember the colony ship you first went on, that had sh tons of ships coming and going constantly. This one is empty. Yes. Yes, it will. Yep. Mm. Um, <laughs> that's, that's really good. Uh, yeah, looking, looking around. Yeah, that, that's, that's good enough. Yeah, looking around. Uh, it is hard to see, but, um, you do see some overturned, uh, 
like loading equipment here and there. Uh, uh, basically like space forklifts are overturned here and there, and and some cargo crates are overturned here and there. Um, you see that there are two significant doors. Uh, Namajira has parked the uh, the Starfighter closer to the or very close to the right side door, uh, which extends towards the front of the ship, or yeah, extends towards the front of the ship. Uh, they're big, almost like vault-like doors, pretty much. They are closed currently. But, uh, just, just looking around, you, you don't see anyone. You don't see anyone or any, you know, it's eerie, but you don't, like, see, like, shadows moving around or anything like that. Yes, it is. Uh, Felipe's gonna slink out and see if he can find any, uh, computers he can hack sure. into. Sure. Uh, Zahariel and Bronzy also, uh, exit on down, and Namajira speaks over the intercom, and she says, I'm not detecting anybody in the immediate vicinity. Uh, if, uh, with your permission, I'm going to take off and I'm going to do a scan... Uh, of the few sec of the couple sectors around you right now. We are not fully robotic. I I still have a human brain, for example. Namajira. <laughs> oh, Gabriella 32. Processing. I do not believe so, because even if they were to give themselves over to an abominable intelligence to sacrifice, say, their brain, would still invite death to the body. She uh, says over the intercom, it should only take me a few minutes. If there's any trouble, let me know immediately. And she uh, seals up the ship, and the ship <laughs> lifts up and turns and zips on back out of the docking bay. Uh, Zahariel, uh, you notice Zahariel forms their hands into the cog again. And, uh, they blurt out, uh, a prayer to the machine god in binary. Uh, Felipe, you understand. Basically praising the machine god for their safe, uh, docking into the ship. <laughs> do I find any, like, uh, terminals or computers or anything? Yes, you do find, uh, there is a terminal next to the big vault doors. All right. Uh, I have a skill called patch in, which al which allows me to spend an action to gain access to computer system. Okay. And... So you're gonna patch in? Yeah. All right. I'm I'm I'm, I'm patching <laughs> so, in. 
how are you, are you patching in with like your like your uh, data slate? Yeah. Like, okay. My little my little laptop. I'm just <laughs> hooking it up in the in the ports. You know you, my, my wires. Yep. You hook it up. <laughs> uh, he doesn't have a case because he's very careful. Oh, because he doesn't drop it. <laughs> You, you patch yourself in, and uh, almost immediately, your laptop is filled with just lines and lines of just binary scripts, and it is just, like, think of, like, the Matrix. It is just, uh -huh. <laughs> like, dumping into your computer right now. <laughs> is there anything legible in there or is it um it seems just like mad rambling you cannot you <laughs> it, it yes in yes in binary it is just complete nonsense oh, God. you see everything from random coordinates to uh falsified reports of gunfire to <laughs> just uh you even see one that that states that the entire ship is destroyed it is just madness in the script okay <laughs> I have a pistol. I have two. Uh, <laughs> Bronzy walks over to you, Felipe, and he says, Now, I'm much more keen to the, like, the guts of a starship than I am to a computer, but I don't think that should be happening, right? Uh, he points at your laptop. At, <laughs> not at all. Uh... And then I, I unplug my laptop and uh, tuck everything away. <laughs> I mean... <sighs> don't, don't say anything to Zahari. I don't have high... I don't have... I'm not hopeful for what's going on. Deep grades. Uh, Bronzy, uh, he wipes his nose and he says... <clears throat> I agree with you. I got a bad feeling about this one. And uh, he, he loosens the piece of pipe at his side a little bit. <laughs> uh, a few moments pass, and then uh, over your radio bead, you hear... Uh, Namajira, and she says, Uh, hold up. That door that you all are at, I'm seeing heat spikes about two sectors over from where you're at. No, they're not moving. I can't quite tell how many there are, though I can say it's at least more than three or four. Yeah, I mean, I don't see what other options we have. It seems like our best lead. Uh, Zahariel uh, extends one of his his uh, robo arms on the on the back, one of their robot the uh, four arms, and plugs it into the socket, the terminal socket, and twists. And Zahario says, uh, as they're as they're twisting the arm around, Zahario says, something is not right. The systems are filled with scrap and dirty code. None of this makes sense. Uh, 
uh, Zahariel turns, nope, Zahariel turns and the door, or turns the arm and then pulls it out and the door is starting to open, but go ahead. Sounds good to me, uh, Bronzy, lead the way. Alright, and Bronzy takes the shield, and he basically is holding it out in front of him like a Roman soldier, with his long piece of pipe drawn at the side. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, and like I said, uh, if you are around Bronzy, like in the same space, you get half cover, because he's so large, and the shield is so large, that he just provides cover for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hey, I, I, that's a pretty good comparison for Bronzy. <laughs> He's huge. <laughs> <clears throat> Alright. Who is going to be behind Bronzy? I will be. Felipe? Okay, and then uh, Zahariel is in front of you, Lucky. <clears throat> uh... Bronzy leads the way. Uh, you encounter two more of the doors, the big vault-like doors, and Zahario opens them each time. And each time Zahario comments that uh, there seems to be, or the, the code is getting more and more dense and more and more uh, nonsense, even more so than it already was before. Finally, uh, Zari Zahariel opens up uh, the door that's supposed to lead into the sector that is uh, filled, that apparently has heat signatures. And when you all step inside, uh, you find that you're in kind of like a circular area, almost? Uh, in the middle of this er area, you see a large uh, shrine and the shrine is of a fully clothed figure that looks similar similar to Zahariel and the figure is kneeling in front of a giant uh, cog with a human skull in the middle of the cog uh, it is rather dark again but you can see uh 10 figures scattered throughout this uh open area uh you see that uh, along the right side of this area you see that it rises up and there's three platforms and there's a figure on each platform uh, these platforms, uh, go, they're about, uh, 20 feet in the air, currently. Um, yeah, they're 20 feet up, basically. And, uh, all of these figures are standing rigid stock still. They're not moving. No, no, they're on platforms, like, like, think like, uh, like, like theater platforms, you know, like, uh, like where you would sit if you were watching a theater and, like, looking down. Yep. Yep. I have a, if it comes to it, there's a map for it, so you'll see. <laughs> uh. This is an altar to an aspect of the machine god. We would go here to pray after midday activities. My scans indicate that they are members 
of the motive force. However, they are all in low power mode currently. Is is Gabriella here? Do you recognize anybody? I am looking for her electronic signature, but she is not here. Maybe we should try to speak with one. Well, there's te there's a three figures on the platforms, but there's yeah. seven others scattered throughout the room. Dahario, <laughs> you don't you don't recognize anybody's signature here. The scrap code is interfering with my scans. I know Gabriella's personal signature thanks to the messages we have shared, but these ones... Hold on. And Zahariel stops for a moment, and then suddenly the figure closest to you, now this figure, is about... Let me count out. Uh, this figure is about 90 feet away, and this figure turns, and, uh, you now see this figure, uh, in full, uh, f or, like, you can now see this figure fully, because, uh, the, uh, one of the strobing lights goes over him. Uh, they look, in a, in many ways they do look like Zahariel, very cyberized, lots of metal parts. However... This figure, the one that's looking at you, has a, like, a face mask that goes over their mouth and, like, their jaw. Uh, but they still have their human flesh where, like, their eyes are. And that flesh is dark, gray, pallid, and, like, it looks dead. <laughs> and, <laughs> yes. And the, <laughs> yes, the figure suddenly looks towards you all. <laughs> and then the figure blurts out a loud just screech in binary. And <laughs> um uh Felipe uh, you just heard it say, <laughs> all praise the voice. <laughs> okay. Uh, here's what the figure looks like, by the way. Uh, Zahariel takes a step back. And, uh, Zaharia replies in binary, uh, to the figure. And, Felipe, again, you understand. Uh, where Zaharia says, You dare speak heresy in this holy hall. You dare praise one that is not the machine god. And then, suddenly, all of the other figures, all turn and they stare at you all and they all blurt out at once in binary all praise the voice and now you all are gonna roll for initiative <laughs> okay <laughs> uh there we go i think can oh. you guys see the map now uh, it's loading ah okay. Yes, all my all my stuff did disappear though. Uh oh. Wait, Fuck. it's just because it's huge. Hang on, hang on. We can just make it smaller. There we go. Yeah, you just gotta move it. Um. Okay, I'll put you just all. Grab and drag supposed. it. Ahaha! I roll initiative. <laughs> Um. 
That's actually not too bad. Okay, uh, I th I'm gonna put them. All right. So you all are. I can put you on the map. Hold on. Oh wait, I have to add you to the combat tracker. That's right. That's right. Um. Oh fuck. No, there was not. <laughs> Yeah, that was just me trying to not give it away that I have a combat map. <laughs> Basically mean like, yeah, you could maybe avoid it. No, no, you can't avoid it. I had this plan from the start. Give me one sec. Okay. I need to add you to... This map is huge. Alright, so you all are here. I think I add you... There we go, I can add you to the map now. Alright, so, this is where you two are starting. I'm, oh, I gotta... Whoops, I didn't mean to do that. Fuck. Okay. Um Can you all see them that I'm adding to the map? Yes. I'm gonna run to the bathroom really quick. Yep. Wait, what am I doing? Sorry, what I was I was adding them. <laughs> um, you can resize the map. Uh, you can resize and then like I what I did is I resized, I set it to small, and then I extended the uh horizontal and the vertical vertical until it fit. Um, hold on, I need to do this, counters, give me, yeah, give me one sec, yeah, just, as soon as I get all of this fucking shit, like, added to the thing. There we go. Okay, I'm back. No, no. Hey, one sec, one sec. I am. Alright, so are they in? Should be in. Give me a second, I have to reset uh, the combat tracker for the enemies because it deleted their fucking tokens. I swear one of these days I'll get used to Fantasy Grounds. It's so much easier, but I'm just dumb and don't do it. <laughs> yeah. It also doesn't help that, like, I haven't played in a little bit, so...
there we go, now. I think they should start appearing. Yup, you guys should be starting to see them pop up yeah. on the... Okay, so. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Okay, so there they are. Oops. This is, uh... This is the, the fucking, the chair in the middle is like the shrine. Because <laughs> this is the best I could work with for now. Um, so, uh, the two at the very back, like that are kind of behind the chair, they are currently in uh, half cover. So you can't see them, or you can see them, but they're in half cover. The three up top are also in half cover. The one on the right and one on the left, you know they're there, but they're in full cover right now. And I think your did your tokens disappear for me? Oh, uh, let's see. I can add you guys in. I don't even know why I say roll for initiative. Oh, oh, well, yeah, like yeah, you roll for initiative to like start, but then it's still popcorn initiative from there. Okay, yeah. Um. Okay. Yep. All right, that is true. All right, I'm gonna throw in bronzy. <laughs> oh no, I lost my map. <laughs> hang on, hang on, I'll find it. I'll find it. I was I was trying to see if I could um. What is the map called? Tech so, crawl. Okay. Yep. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I was trying to see if I could fucking ex um use my TV as a as a dual monitor so I could <laughs> have more things on my screen, but uh <laughs> no. Okay. Um. I'm going to say lucky you are going to go first. I'm just going to have you go first for this, because I don't want to do ten fucking rolls. <laughs> they, they're just, yep, they're fully exposed. Everybody else has, uh, the, up, the ones up on the platforms and the two behind the, the shrine have half cover. And then the two around the corners have full cover. You just, you know they're there. They just have full cover. Uh, nope, that is Zahariel. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, it's okay. Ah, uh, so you so you see the helmet, right? To the right of the helmet, there's a little, it kind of looks like a bullseye or like an X. Yep, it's right, it's right, it right, it's, it's right next to the fist. It's like directly to the left of the fist. The hell? Okay, and that's it. Oh, um, I think on. you just drag, don't you just drag the die to the, yeah. Yeah, yeah, just, yeah, just do that. Okay.
Uh, yep, yep, uh, that's a miss. <laughs> ah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, lucky, you're, you're taken by surprise a little bit, and you, like, you, like, do the, you do the quick little, like, draw, like, pull the hammer back and fire, and it just goes, it goes whizzing right past, uh, it, it actually, it punctures a hole through the, uh, the hood that they're wearing. That's how close it came. Um <laughs> Um okay, what is the range? A square is is 10 feet or yeah, 10 feet. Um oh boy. Or is it five? Hold on. Yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, it, it's... Um, I'm... Let me see. For this for this one, I'm gonna say it's five, because I'm just gonna fuck up, like, everything. So... Okay. <laughs> um, great. Okay. Okay, so I am going to, uh, uh, do, wait, wait, where is it, um, improvise grenade, I'm gonna take a bunch of scrap metal from out <laughs> my backpack and, um, <laughs> throw a grenade in the middle of, what is, uh, identified creature, uh, is it six, two, and eight? Two... Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, two six and just identified creature doesn't have a name. Just mm -hmm. not a number. Just identified. Yeah. Oh yeah, creature. that one. <laughs> um, in the middle of them. So. Uh, dex it's a de they're gonna do a dex dexterity save. Um, and they're if for half damage and it's gonna do forty six concussion damage and also objects in that area take 46 concussion damage okay so and uh the the two six and 13. eight save is 13 okay two six and eight uh yeah i'll just do okay uh uh so we'll say that we'll just go in order two saved six not saved eight uh, uh, not saved, and then the last one, if I can pull up their fucking combat sheet, please. <laughs> okay, and then the last one, uh, not saved. Okay, so three saved, one not saved. Okay, and then let's. So just roll that. What is it? Four. What is it? Forty. Forty-six yep. concussion damage. Yep. All right. Okay. So, uh, six, eight, and the other un unidentified one are taking full damage. Uh, two is taking half. So nine damage to six, eight, on I and the other one, and then cut in half. Round up. Five damage to. All right. Makes sense. Okay. Oh, and before I throw it, I'm gonna say, fire the hole, <laughs> and then chuck it with my little arm. Wait, no. Two took half damage area. Six. Did the statue take any damage? Uh, yeah. <laughs> it has been pretty much defaced by it. Uh-oh. <laughs> Sorry, Zaharia. Wait, is that... Is that is that the one you like or? <laughs> they are all sacred. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <clears throat> uh. 
Okay. So, you you chuck the grenade and you have just blown like you've blown their robes off. You've shredded them pretty much. They are barely like you you're amazed that they are still standing. But to your surprise, they don't let out a cry of pain or anything when it happens. Am I surprised? <laughs> um, but you can now fully see, now that like a lot of their robes are, are ripped and whatnot, that the, the flesh, the pieces of flesh that are left, it is just rotting underneath, and it is like... Does it just... sink in here? Uh, yeah, it, it smells, it smells like, it smells like a mixture of rotten flesh and oil. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> Zahariel, uh, says... Uh, or Zahariel shakes their robed head. Uh, <laughs> uh Zahariel, uh, why don't you, uh, take the lead this time, and, uh, I'm gonna pop right to Zahariel. Alright. <clears throat> uh, Zahariel looks around at what's going on, and says, I apologize for this. And <laughs> Zahariel's, uh, <laughs> Zahariel, uh, reaches or take or reaches the, um, one of his, their arms, their metal arms that are attached to their back into their robe, and it draws out a long, uh, submachine gun. Ah. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and the uh you see that it powers up and then just foosh, 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 he or they let out three bolts of plasma towards the uh uh the three that are in front of you that were already targeted. So this is a uh this is a spray so it's gonna hit these three all with one one attack, because they're uh, so close to each other. So, <laughs> uh, we'll do so against. We'll just, I'll just I'm just gonna make three rolls, because I'm not gonna sit and. All right, so that one one's a miss. Who's <laughs> a miss? Oh my god! Oh oh. <laughs> Okay, so that's a critical on number eight. <laughs> so <laughs> you see the three bolts fly out, and the one or uh, one uh, dodges uh, aside. The uh, another bolt goes careening off. Uh, and barely misses the statue, but the third connects, and I'm not even gonna need to roll for damage, the third connects with the third, uh, one on the furthest, uh, to your left, to, to your furthest left, and you just, it, 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 for a brief second, it looks like a mini sun erupts in the room, and then there's nothing but ash left of the, that third one. Jesus. We must cleanse this holy place of these heretics. <laughs> Please, <laughs> designation one zero three two bronzy. Kill these heretics. <laughs> <laughs> the bronzy's turn. <clears throat> uh, so, bronzy is going to. Uh, heft his shield up, and he's gonna move, uh, forward, uh, his full 30 speed, so 1, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, so he's right here now. He Did he update on the map for you? Just wanna make sure. Yeah. Okay, so he's, he's, he's right there. He, 
Yeah, 30 feet. <laughs> he plants the shield down in uh, front of him. And he draws his auto pistol. And from, like, behind the shield, he's going to fire his auto pistol. Like, around the shield. Uh, and he's going to fire it at uh, the one on the right, unidentified creature 2. <clears throat> so where? Yeah. Oh, and he hits. Oh, uh, Bronzy plants the shield down, and he says, "All right, come and get it." And he put uh, he, he he pushes himself around the uh, around the shield a little bit, and he fires, and he headshots uh, a uh, unidentified creature too, and they fall to the ground, and they they are dead instantly. Uh. Alright, so all of the uh, regular ones are going to just do theirs all at once. So 5, 7, and 3 are going to fire at Bronzy. As is 6. So 5, 7, 3, and 6 are going to fire at Bronzy. These two, 4 and 10, are going to move out of cover to 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 here. Hold up. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 here. Uh, you could make an opportunity attack. Oh, wait, hold on. And then these two here. 5, 10. Gonna move here. 5, 10, 15, there. Uh, any one of those that moved, so 10, 4, 1, or 9, you could make an opportunity attack against. Uh, yep. I'll make mine against 1. You'll make yours against 1, okay. Oh... Okay. Okay. I'm gonna pull out. I'm gonna. I'm gonna whip out my arc pistol. <laughs> uh. And I'm gonna. Uh, aim it and uh, shoot it. At one. All right. Oh, uh, you notice that the ones that are that are getting really close to Bronzy and you two, uh, they have what looks like pieces of the ship that have been crudely fashioned like an axe. Did you roll the hit? Yeah. Oh, you oh did. no. Nope. I rolled to attack. <laughs> let me. Yep. Let me. Uh, da, 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 da. Where is. Uh, Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> you. You. You fire. You go to fire, and then your it sparks, and just a lightning bolt goes out to the left side, and just sparks into the ground. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Okay. Uh, the, they're moving. They're moving. You see the one coming towards you out of the corner of your eye. So it just you you you're distracted for a second. Your shot goes wide. <laughs> Bronzy looks behind and sees that uh, you're being uh attacked Felipe and uh, he sees your your weapon misfire and he says <coughs> Felipe look out and he's gonna fire his pistol at uh, number one so he is going to do I look out <laughs> but uh, his shot uh, also goes wide uh, finally Zahario after firing uh, with the, uh, with the pit, or his, their SMG, 
Yeah. Uh, they see the uh, this other one coming on their left, and using the arm on their servo harness, one of the other arms, uh, you notice that they form the arm into like a serrated blade, and they're swiping it down at uh, the one coming on their left here. Against nine, okay. Uh, and they hit. Yeah. Uh, they bring the bladed arm down and, uh, they slash into the arm of, uh, this creature and just rotten flesh, like, Old blood and oil just comes leaking out from the new wound. Yeah. Uh, yep. Mm. Uh, so... So six, three, seven, and five are all going to attack at the same time. And I'm just going to make... No, I have to make one roll at a time. Okay, so... Six... against bronzy Where are you bronzy? 6 against bronzy uh is a miss. Uh 5 7 and 3. Okay. 5 7 and 3. All right, so, uh, you see a hail of las bolts come firing out towards Bronzy, but Bronzy, like, lifts up the shield and blocks one, and then he turns really quick, and he blocks two, but one actually manages to sneak under his guard, and, uh, it hits him for... 1d6 plus 1, okay. It hits him for... Ooh, damn, seven damage. So it, it, it comes uh, uh, blazing in, and it, it hits him around his shin, and you see he grits his teeth a little bit as uh, he's burned by the last bolt. Um, <clears throat> creature one is going to swing at you, uh, Felipe, with its improvised axe. Oh, that's a hit. Okay. For three damage. So, uh, it swings its improvised axe and it like hits you, uh, in the arm. But this is such a rusty piece of like shit that it's it, it's more it, mm. it it more it hits and it's like kind of like a blunt object hitting you in the arm versus a bladed object hitting you in yeah. the arm. <laughs> I uh, think I would be, yeah. Creature 9 is going to do... Uh, ch -ch 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 -ch, uh, its attack with its blunt weapon against Zahariel. Uh, but uh, after Zahariel gets done slashing with uh, their bladed arm, uh, when the axe is coming around to hit it, uh, the uh, one of the other arms of the four just bats out and knocks the axe aside as it's coming in to slash at Zahariel. Uh, finally, the last of them uh, throws off their robes, and you see they are completely covered in what look like censers, like religious censers. <laughs> and uh they <laughs> uh they grab two of these sensors and they just crush them in their hands and they open up their hands and just a wave of incense comes out and it 
it's so much that it goes, it, it's literally like a fog that's gathering around your ankles. Hmm. Um, <laughs> you'd have to try to smell it. <laughs> uh, Zahariel shouts out... The incense is infested with scrap code. Be wary. <laughs> As uh, they are going to attack uh, with their servo harness again against the one right next to them, the uh, number nine. Uh... Bell, did you ever, because we leveled up last time, did you ever increase HP? Oh, sad. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, but Zahariel Slash is caught by the axe of the, uh, creature next to them. Uh, Zahario uh, shouts out uh, 1032 you are in danger defend yourself and Proxy kind of looks back at Zahario and just <laughs> yeah I got it <laughs> uh, Bronzy uh, is looking around and he says all right, didn't want to break this out right away, but let's do this. And he takes his hand and he rubs it across the tattoo on his head, the side of his head. And before and before your eyes, uh, his head, you you watch as the skin roils, the tattoo glows, and then his head turns pitch black and like shiny. Hell yeah. And, uh, this is Bronzy activating his over-spliced. Because <laughs> he's that spliced. <laughs> You'll see. <laughs> uh, and he roars out, he says, Alright! And he pounds his chest and says, I'll show you what a hell it can do! And he is going to push Unidentified Creature 10 here. And he is going to whack them with his shield <laughs> and because he's over spliced he gets to add 1d8 to this both Ooh. uh that's a hit so don't need to don't need to do that or don't need to add so here's the damage so, 6 plus 1d8. Uh. Oof. Oh, no, no, I did 2. Whoops, my bad. I meant to do 10. Uh. 2's already unconscious. My bad. Uh. <laughs> 10. There we go. Oh, there. Yep. So, Bronzy walks or runs up and uh, just bashes the skull in of uh, this creature and it just it sends brains splattering across the floor floor as the creature goes uh, creature goes to the uh, ground and just to put the icing on the cake bronzy steps on their chest and just caves in their chest oh with the my weight God. with the weight of his boot. And, uh, but then, uh, you notice that, uh, I have to do this one more time. Where is Bronzy? Uh, you see blood start to trickle out from Bronzy's ear. And you know what? Bronzy's gonna action surge and do it again. 
<laughs> Bronzy is now going to push unidentified creature six and do the same thing. Actually, no, Bronzy's going to swim with the pipe this time. <laughs> oh, and that's a hit. Uh, <laughs> oh god, they're down. <laughs> so, yeah, so Bronzy... Alright, here's the sequence. Shield bash, down to the ground, chest cave in, Bronzy just roars, and he you could tell he's in a rage. And he just runs over, and he swings this pipe, and he just brains this other one. Again, same thing as before, brains everywhere. Uh, however... <laughs> uh, again... Uh, you see another little trickle of blood come out of his ear again when he does this. Uh, he's going to roar and he's going to say, Felipe, you're up! Okay. Um. Oh, let's see. Here we go. <laughs> so I'm gonna use another. I'm gonna use a, a, another one of my abilities. Uh, called uh, secret abilities. Once per session, I may pull a gambit of my choice at level equal to third of character level rounded up. So at level one, at no cost, I'm gonna use electric jolt. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> so I just charge an electric blast to all creatures within range who must succeed in dexterity save to avoid 1d6 electricity damage and being knocked prone. So I'm going to do that on the one right in front of me is that identified creature, unidentified creature 1, mm -hmm. so it has to make a dex save. Dex save, got it. Well, they oh. made it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so <laughs> nothing happened. I just <laughs> whiff. Uh, you extend your, I, I guess your finger out to do the electric jolt, mm -hmm. and you just, you hit the fleshy part, and the creature literally doesn't care, even if you char the flesh. Some, uh, juice gooshes out. <laughs> The only one of your group that hasn't gone yet is Lucky. Uh, yeah, Lucky. Uh... Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm gonna say right now, if you pass it on to one of them, just for simplicity's sake, I'm gonna have them all go at once. Cause I can't... <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm gonna turn around and say, Uh, L Lucky, can I have a little help here? <laughs> and I kind of shake my... The ha my hand off. Ah, uh, you are more than free to. Mm -hmm. <sighs> I'm going to say strength, so it'll be like a regular attack, right? Um, I pulled up draft horse, uh. <laughs> And the D and D, and hooves action. Uh, it's it's bludgeoning, and it, it's was say two D four plus. 
got two hooves. Yeah. Okay. I'll say. Yeah. I'll. I'll, I'll say. Uh, we'll use your strength modifier to hit. Uh, damage will be two d four, and because it's lucky and they're so big and all that, I'll say they have to make a strength saving throw, or else they'll be knocked prone. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Should be one. I think Yeah, three. the one in front of me? Yeah, yeah. No, three, no three, you just like three completely is ignore me and go into track <laughs> attack number three. <laughs> You're like, uh screw you. <laughs> I kind of imagine it like Lucky's just kind of sh side shuffling and just like kicking out. <laughs> uh. Yeah, just just do it. Just grab the D. Just grab the D twenty and then add your modifier into the chat. Yeah. Uh No, no, no it's it's just an attack. It's just an attack. Which, yeah, that's a miss. Yeah. <laughs> it is. <laughs> uh, you... <laughs> okay. The... Yeah, it's one. Yep. That's a hit. Unarmed attack? What? Is arm slash unarmed? Oh, okay, yeah, then yeah, too. You just pulled a dead fleshy part on their body. <laughs> uh, okay, so. Um, with the incense now, uh, filtering in the room, uh, Unidentified creature one next to uh, Felipe. Uh, they're going to just bend over quick, and they're just gonna inhale this incense. Like, um, I I know he's there. I know, like, he's in Felipe's space, right? Pretty much. Yeah, yeah. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Right there. That's perfect. So, they're gonna inhale. They're gonna inhale this incense, and you see that their 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 dim green eyes that they normally are. They're gonna flash bright red for a second, and they are going to uh, uh they're going to flash bright red for a second, and then they uh restore one d four healing. That uh, well, it's. <laughs> It's like that didn't even happen. <laughs> so they're healed up, and they are going to attack. Uh, they're going to attack you, Lucky, now with that axe that they have. Oof. Hope you have your tetanus. That's a miss. Uh, they swing the axe, and uh, y you see it coming. You have your lasso, right? That you're just gonna whip your lasso out and just like whip it out of the way as they're trying to attack you. <laughs> creature, <laughs> creature nine is going to inhale the incense. 
before they attack Sahariel, so they restore two. Uh, they are going to swing their axe at Zahariel. Ah, uh, but miss. You know what? I think I can add you guys, like, can I move you guys up the, yeah, here. This will make my life easy. So you guys are all at the top of the list and they're at the bottom. Okay. <laughs> um, creature four is going to move to here, and you all may make an opportunity attack against creature four while they're moving there, if you so wish. Yes. Uh, I'll go first. No, cre no, no, they're moving to bronzy. Yeah, they're moving to bronzy. Yep. <laughs> That's a miss. Bane. Miss. <laughs> Felipe. <laughs> at, at number four, you said? Yeah. That's Hell it. yeah! <laughs> So, uh, oh, well, let me roll damage as well. Fuck yeah! Jesus Christ. <laughs> okay, so, um, uh, because, because Lucky's in, in front of, of me, so I'm just gonna drop down into, like, a kneeling position, uh, pull out my arc pistol again, and shoot it <laughs> under, from underneath Lucky. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> and you, yep, go ahead. Because of the electricity, uh, he he feels some static, and the the fur on on his stomach kind of like stands out, like when you <laughs> your head with a balloon. Uh, you hit. <laughs> well, I was just gonna say, you hit the creature, and you fry out a lot of its remaining cybernetic enhancements. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah! All right, but go ahead, Lucky. <laughs> uh, so uh, in the midst of this like melee, uh, the arm <laughs> that's holding the SMG is just going to like auto fire while Zahariel is still focused on this melee with the other one. <laughs> oh my God. No, it's just it's it's my flavoring for like Zahariel can just sit and. Zahario can just, just do OP. this. <laughs> but the the shot flies wide and it just it atomizes a section of wall further up in the room. <laughs> uh, Bronzy sees uh, creature four coming and he goes, "Oh no 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 no!" And he's gonna fire his pistol uh, as an opportunity attack against them. But they're gonna fire wide. Uh, creature four is going to come up to Bronzy and attempt to hit him with their uh, fucking axe. But Bronzy gets his shield up in time and blocks it. <clears throat> Three, seven, and five are going to fire at Bronzy. Uh, three, seven, and five. Uh, but uh, Bronzy like ducks low while it's coming, and they hit the back side of the shield around his arm. But one does strike him in the back, one of the last bolts. Uh... Oops. 
for ooh, six more damage to Bronzy. And uh, it hits him like in the small of his back, and he grits his teeth again. He goes, mmm, they're getting pretty annoying up there. <laughs> the last remaining creature, the one that is covered in sensors, uh, they pull out a long pole, but on the end of it is a large sensor. And they're going to whip it around. Uh, they're going to move towards Bronzy here. And because you guys are out of opportunity attacks, can't make one against them. They're going to whip it around, and they're going to try to strike Bronzy with this sensor. Oh no, that's a hit. So... Oh, five damage to Bronzy. Uh, okay, Bronzy needs to make a strength saving throw. Or no, con? Con saving throw, never mind. DC 13. Ooh, they barely succeed. Uh, so, y you watch as they, they are swinging this around, and they just smack Bronzy in the chest, and he just gets a big puff of incense in his face, and he, he coughs a little bit, but he, he shakes it he shakes it off. And, uh, he is going to respond to this attack against him. And he's just going to wide swing his, uh, pipe towards the sensor bearer. Oh, and he hits him. Or that, but he also has to do the overspliced damage, which is even more, and uh, one more against. Ooh, so Bronzy swings the pipe and just caves in this. Uh, creature's skull. And when he does so, the rest of the creatures in the room go rigid and they fall down and die. Uh, you now see from both of Bronzy's nostrils a just pool of blood come out of his nostrils. Oh. God. And he he goes up and he uh he rubs his hand back over his tattoo, and the the shiny metallic black of his skin disappears. Uh, so he looks like normal again. And he he goes down to one knee and he kind of pushes himself back up. <laughs> he's got a couple of burn wounds. He's bleeding from his nose and from his ears. And uh, when you see him, his eyes are now also bloodshot. Did the incense in incense dissipate? Yes, it has now dissipated. Okay. <clears throat> it lets me push my limits for quite a bit. But and he coughs a little bit, and he says, "It's like a cancer in my blood. The longer I go, the more it damages to me, the more damage it does to my body. You can see why the helots were considered failures." <clears throat> For now, yeah. And he hefts the shield back up, and he slides it back across his, uh, back on his back. One moment, please. And Zahariel takes uh, the uh, one of the uh, arms, and the one that was attacking them in melee, they just plunge the arm into their skull. <laughs> and you hear the skull crack, and you hear some shifting around a little bit, and then they pull out a long metal spike from their skull. 
and they turn the spike around. And now, for the first time, Zaharia removes their hood. And you get to see what's underneath the hood. I pretend I do not see it. <laughs> uh, just let me find the picture, because I don't remember if I put it in the far side. Uh, fuck. Okay, it's going to give me a minute. I know the, the fucking... The weight is aggravating. Uh... No, where is it? Fuck, where is it? Uh... What are the... It's... It's George Clooney. <laughs> where did I put it? Um... Okay, give me a sec. I know I know where to find the picture again. So just give me one sec. I think I have to re-download it. I don't know why I can't find it. Um. Is it? This is this, this is the one and only picture that I need for Sahariel for their head. No. It is the perfect picture. Yeah, I probably oh well, found it. <laughs> Hell yeah! Let's go. Sent it. Okay. So their entire skull and head is just encased in a brass like dome basically and they've got their three eyes and Zahariel takes takes the spike and just drives it into a slot at the back of their head and they say scanning processing error error Error. <laughs> Zahario holds up one of their mechadendrite arms and says, <laughs> Wait, please. My antiviruses are in effect. <laughs> Discovered. Oh. They are all. They are alive, but they appear to have had their minds spliced into a gasalt consciousness. A hive mind, if you will. Uh, is there a way to fix that? Judging 
by the state of the decay of their human parts to free them from the hive right. mind would be one fatal and two extremely painful death is a mercy for them yes I have discovered what this voice is that they were talking about the voice is the one who created the scrap code that has infested their minds and stripped them of their free will the origin of this voice is processing one moment please it is Gabriella 32 um. one moment purging what? all positive emotions regarding Gabriella 32 complete Um, was it a trick to get you here to, to turn you into one of them? That is most likely the case. Logic, if there is a logical answer, would say that Gabriella 32 is making what you would call a power play that appears to be the case I am detecting multiple signals dispatched to motive force members across the Cygnus Kepler X1 system she is calling as many members back to the Ark Majesty as she can is there a way for us to reach out to them and say hey don't come here is all a trap negative it has been set to an automated response signal she is jamming any other signals outside of the ship can you tell I am detecting her signature finally at the bridge oh Cl <laughs> Cleanse her, is that the phrase you would use, Zahario? Yes, this is heresy of the highest order. If I still possess the capabilities for fury and anger, I would be filled with both of them. I'm sorry she did this to you. I have purged all positive emotions of her, therefore it is fine. Okay. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Namajira, go for lucky. She has hacked their cyberized brains 
and has turned them into her thrall. She has committed heresy of the highest order. She is also calling all members of the cult from around the system to this ship. We cannot let that happen. <laughs> Roger that. I will see... I will let you know if I come up with anything. Otherwise, it might just be a mad dash back to the dock. You got it. I'm going I will stay on the outside here and just in case any of these other cult members shows up, I might be able to warn them ahead of time. <laughs> Don't worry, I got you. It seems that Zahariel is half right. She's blocking long range communications, but short range should work just fine. <laughs> yep. <clears throat> All right. Bronzy, uh sheets his pipe and uh, is holding his shield up and he says I still got a little bit left in the tank let's do this Bronzy is uh eleven hit points. Eleven hit points left. <sighs> I know I have to be up for work at fucking two in the morning. <laughs> I should have expected this. It went about it went about four hours last time. I had a solo, mm -hmm. I had a mini session. They have no lips. How will they get a kiss kiss? <laughs> Very ugly, no kiss for them. Also me when someone asks me what <laughs> margarine is. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome oh. back. <laughs> uh, I have located the bridge and I can open every door on the way there. I have also s managed to break through 
most of the scrap code and have therefore been able to seal off any other entrances on the way to the bridge, we should have a clear, as you would say, road to the bridge. Yeah, let's, let's fucking go. Uh, you, uh, begin, or you all walk towards the bridge, and as Zahariel said, you clear the way to the bridge. Uh, the door to the bridge opens, and inside, uh, you finally get a look at the one who has caused all of these issues. Uh, standing before you all is Gabriella32, who looks like this. Oh yeah. <laughs> and Gabriella32 uh, looks at uh, Zahariel. And she says, Zahario 32, I am so glad you decided to finally join us. I am uh, going to pretend that that fleshling did not just speak to me. Uh, I'm gonna speak in binary. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna speak in binary and I'm gonna say to her, the only uh, people that are gonna be joining is you gonna be joining your friends in, in hell. <laughs> <laughs> Zariel speaks up and they say, why would you do this, Gabriella? Why would you commit such an act of heresy against the motive force and the machine god? The motive force is false, Zahariel. There is no machine god. There is only... Or the flesh is weak, Zahariel. We must sacrifice it all to achieve apotheosis, to achieve godhood itself. They're speaking in binary. Yes. <laughs> 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 we must sacrifice our flesh fully to achieve apotheosis and godhood. We must seize our own godhood, Zahariel. Zahariel, uh, for the first time you think you've ever noticed kind of shows a little bit of a human emotion as they kind of sigh and just kind of slink back. And Zahariel says, Very well, as a humble servant of the machine god, it falls to me to end this glitch in the code and Zahariel draws their uh, plasma SMG. Uh, she does have uh, two of the thrall and one sensor bearer with her. Okay. Now then. Uh, oh yeah, they're all identified at this point, so. Uh, should be able to see. Yep. Oh, okay. hell yeah. Um. I love how fucking big it makes the map at first. <laughs> um. Oh. There we go. 
Uh, I don't think it added their tokens to the... No, of course it didn't. Okay. Alright. Yeah. Also, I like how on the last map, it looks like the, the floor is full of bodies. <laughs> uh, sorry, I'm just I'm adjusting my map right now. Uh the the last map the floor was full of bodies, yeah it did look like that. Like I'm working with fantasy maps right now. Which th <laughs> yes. this is technically Dragon Lair, I guess, but I was like that sounds cool. Um and again, just to make things easy, I'm gonna have Zahariel start this, and then we'll mm -hmm. popcorn from there. That, and I do have to be up at 2 in the morning, so we're gonna do this fast. <laughs> okay, so you all are going to start... I'll put you on the map. There we go. That's where you're at, if you can see each other, right? All right, perfect. Uh, by the way, Zahario said that last part in uh, common, so you can understand him saying he's just going to delete uh, Gabriella. <laughs> he called her a glitch in the code. <laughs> Time to die. <laughs> Pulling up character sheets. Uh, ch -ch 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 -ch. I think that's all I really need to pull up. <laughs> <Ta. laughs> Cap <Cap-up. laughs> Oh god. New head cannon. <laughs> okay, so. Zahariel is going to do the attack with the Plasma SMG, and it's a spray, so... <laughs> there we go. So it's going to hit everybody there. Uh, miss, hit, oh god, Zahariel is pissed. <laughs> Alright, well that's three out of four hits, of course they miss fucking the, the one super important one, but, so that is, uh, 1d8 to sensor bearer for 4 to uh we'll just make it 4 for all of them to make this fast all right so oh wait the one takes 8 automatically plus another roll well okay so Zahariel pulls out the uh plasma smg and it's just Boom, 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 boom. Four shots, and one, uh, number one, uh, is hit directly in the head, and it just, head ash gone, just falls to the ground dead. Uh, the other, or uh, the sensor bear, or Gabriella sidesteps her shot, which, uh, conveniently hits the sensor bearer behind her directly in the chest uh who uh it cooks off a bunch of the remaining flesh while the other one uh a sizable chunk of the cybernetics in their side is just blown off <laughs> uh wait one sec Ten twenty-five designation Felipe, please purge these heretics. 
Yeah, of course. Let's, uh, <laughs> and Felipe ducks down, and, um, from the last room, he had salvaged some of the, uh, heretic's parts, and he builds, he, <laughs> he improvises another grenade, <laughs> and, uh, chucks it, it right at, uh, Gabriella. Nice. So it's a... How many times? Uh, four times. So dex, dex saving throw what? Yeah, dex save to for thirteen. Okay, so I have to catch all of them. So Gabriella sensor bear attack throw. Gabriella saved. Uh that is sensor bear. I'm just gonna count that as sensor bear save because they all have the same dex modifier. And tech thrall, also saved. So tech thrall and Gabriella take half, while sensor bear takes full. So I'll make one roll and we'll cut it in half. So, ah, uh, five. Oh my god. Ah. Uh, and there we go. Oh jeez. Ah, uh, so it explodes. And it just sends shrapnel everywhere, and the sensor bear and the tech thrall, they're just like shredded. Uh, Gabriella takes some damage, but she's, uh, she's still doing fine. <laughs> uh, um... <you're... laughs> uh, uh, let's just keep going down the line, and I'm gonna, uh, uh, s uh, not, I, I'll, I'll, uh, p tap, uh, Fucking uh, Bronzy's. I guess probably not his shoulder, so I guess just his midriff. Mm -hmm. uh, not his ass. Uh, his back and be like, alright, it's all you, buddy. Uh, go aim for the head, probably. <laughs> uh, Bronzy's going to step right into your space, Lucky. And Bronz Bronzy's going to plant his shield down, and he's going to look up at you, and he's going to say, here, use it for cover and a brace for your gun. Uh, so he's doing the help action. Uh, you get to make your next attack at advantage. <laughs> so he's got his shield planted and he's kind of like tucked up behind it and he's basically he's like sitting right in front of you and he's like, like yeah, use it as a like a, a brace for the gun. Add advantage. <laughs> there you go. Uh, you fire off a shot and you strike her right in the head. And it kind of, your bullet embeds uh, in her head, and her neck snaps back, and then it snaps back into place, and she's just staring at you. Uh. <laughs> uh. <laughs> uh. Your, or, uh, Felipe, your radio bead beeps, and a voice comes over it, and it's Namajira, and she says, I have a lock on your position, Felipe. If you can hold them off for just a little while longer, I might be able to give you a hand here. Uh, I, uh, respond, I'm like, yeah, should be, no, problem. We have it, uh, pretty <laughs> out of control, but we appreciate the support. <laughs> Gabriella looks, uh, or Gabriella looks around after she's been shot, and she holds her hand up to the ceiling, and, uh, she, uh, the fingers on her hand, like, contort a little bit, and then a little hologram, like, appears above her, and she taps a button on it, and suddenly, from the ceiling, 
Uh, five more thrall are brought down into the room. Like, descending on, like, hooks. They're brought down into the room. Like, um, Gaga at the Super Bowl. Or, yeah, sorry, I'm adding them into the, I'm adding them into the combat tracker. <laughs> Did I do that? Give me one sec. So, turns out summoning things is stupid because I have to actually add them into the combat tracker and then re-add them into the thing. Why I do this to myself, I will never know. But here they come. As soon as you said, here they come, my computer immediately fell asleep. <laughs> Alright, so yeah, five more Thrall have now been added into the room. They will not be able to do anything this turn, though. Ah, losers. Oh god! Uh, the one that can actually move, though, uh, is going to fire a LAS pistol at Felipe. Uh-huh. Uh. You try. <laughs> and, uh, but you see it coming, Felipe, <laughs> you duck, and it misses. Uh, the sensor bear is going to break two of the sensor cubes, and, uh, incense is now filling the room. <sighs> Zahariel, uh, looks at the new thrall in the room, and, uh, says to Gabriella, I am going to lay the bodies of all these thrall at your feet before I kill you. <laughs> and, uh, they are going to turn and fire all, at all of the, the five new thrall that are in the room. So I'm going to say the spray will catch all the thrall, but not anybody else. Alright, so three, three through seven I have to make attacks against, okay. Three. Four. Five. Six. And, oh my god, it's gonna hit like everyone but one. Nope. So, uh... Four, five, and six are taking... One D8 damage. Oh my god, they're each taking seven damage. So, Zahario just looses fucking five bolts of plasma, and although uh, two of them miss, three strike and just cook off a good chunk of the bodies of each of uh, four, five, and six that have just descended from the ceiling. Uh, Zahario, uh says 1026 designation lucky please kill them <laughs> mhm mm Seven. Yep. No, no, that that's five feet of space there, so you can so like a melee weapon's five feet. Of reach, yeah. Huh. 
<laughs> you try no. to pull him over, but it doesn't work. <laughs> you rolling with weighted dice? <laughs> that doesn't ex Val, it's, uh, they're not real die. It's not... No, it's no. not real. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Felipe and a bronzy. <laughs> uh, r right. No problem. Um, so I'm gonna duck behind bronzy. Uh, <laughs> and pull out my laptop and start furiously typing and I am going to pull Gambit uh, apathy <laughs> so 5d8 hit points worth of creatures of my choice within range uh, become neutral towards you and your companions for the duration unless harmed oh which is God. <laughs> one hour so that's 8 is this one it was I said 5d8 correct yeah So 16. 16. So Is they're that... all. <laughs> um. Hmm. I'm gonna need to figure out how this works because I do have a trait for the thrall where it, it's hive mind, where they uh basically they only listen to Gabriella. Oh. But Gabriella. <laughs> does she have more than 16 hit points? Oh yeah, she does. Okay. Um. But the thrall... Hmm. You know what? We'll compromise. I'll say all of the thrall and a sensor bearer, uh, you've confused their systems and for a turn they can't do anything. Okay. <laughs> alright, alright, I like that. Yeah. That'll be our compromise. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, Felipe, uh, his, uh, robotic brow furrows, uh, <laughs> his, his furry robotic brow, uh, and he's like, Sh uh, shit, that's not what I wanted to do, but, uh, lucky I bought you some time, uh, uh, Bronzy, you wanna do something here? Uh, <laughs> Bronzy nods, and, uh, uh, Bronzy is, or he's going to, no he nods, and he says, all right, give me a moment, and he, uh, he pats his chest a little bit, and, uh, he's going to use second wind to get 1d8 hit points back. Oh, eight hit points. Hell yeah. And he says, "All right, I didn't want to do this again, but." And he wipes his hand across his tattoo, and he's over splicing oh. himself again. <laughs> oh God! So Bronzy has over spliced, and ah, uh, twice. <laughs> oh, I forgot. It adds. Plus one to his AC. Oh well. And he is going to uh, charge in. And the 1520. And he's taking on Gabrielle. And he, he, he's, he's basically he's pushing up with his shield out in front of him. And Gabriella is going to do an opportunity attack against him. So Gabriella, uh, she has her two hands. Uh, you see, they are they're bladed. And they're just, like, uh, dripping with blood. But she also, like Zahariel, has a servo harness where she has the four weapon arms. And each arm has a las pistol. So she's going to make four attacks, one for each las pistol against Bronzy as he's pushing her. God. So... 
plus four to hit. I have to do this four times. Uh, miss. Pull up Bronte's sheet. Okay. Uh, that's plus four, six. Miss. M uh, ten, miss. Ah. Uh. Uh, 18. Okay. So, uh, all four pistols at the fire, fire at the same time, and three strike the shield, but the fourth finally gets through and it hits Bronzy. Uh, it hits him, uh, as he's moving forward, and that deals this much damage to Bronzy. Three damage to Bronzy. But he's gonna run up and uh he is going to swing the shield at her he hits her for that much oh my god plus a d8 hell yeah uh Oh my god. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> uh, but he also Ron takes... Ronzi that... said Patrick is going to sleep. Yeah. Uh, he ta uh, his ears start bleeding again. Uh, she also has to make, because he hit her with a shield, a strength saving throw. Which she passes. So Bronzy just comes running up, and he puts, like, all of his strength behind his shield, and he just plows into her. And he, like, hits her backwards, and she, like, smashes into, uh, uh, like, the console, like, the, the bridge console behind her, and it, like, sparks, and, uh... You see that, like, like the electricity just, like, goes throughout her body and it fries some of her, uh, augmentic, <laughs> augmentic, a little, little augmentics. <laughs> and, uh, he cracks his mind and says, How do you like that, bitch? <laughs> uh, Felipe, your, uh, ear bead crackles again, and you hear... I'm on approach, Felipe. Um, I would highly recommend you clear away from her. Uh, that's not me, that's, uh, yep, I'll get, uh, see if I can get Bronzy out of there, uh. What are you, what are you gonna do? It's going to be, uh, let's just say it's about to get very, very... Uh, hot in there real quick. <laughs> uh, but it's Gabriella's turn, and she is going to use her flensing blades against Bronzy, of which she has four of them. <laughs> so, attacking Bronzy. That's a hit. Uh, that's a miss. That's a hit. And... Oh my god, she just critical Bronzy. Oh no. <laughs> Bronzy so, fucking dies. That's... 10 damage automatically plus uh so okay uh that I have to add up all the other damage okay I'm gonna add up the Damage. I don't want it to, cause technic, cause it, it it has to be double his health to like kill him. So six 
and 10. That's 8, or uh, 16. Uh, does not double his health to kill him, but he is unconscious. So she grabs the uh, shield with uh, like her one hand, and she moves it aside, and her hand like spins, her other hand spins on its axis, and she just slashes across Bronzy. And she just flenses and flenses and flenses and blood just goes everywhere and then she kicks Bronzy down away from her and he is completely unconscious on the ground now. Uh, I'm gonna say it's your turn, Lucky. As a, as a free action, I'm gonna yell. Uh, Lucky, you're gonna want to grab uh, Bronzy and, and get the hell out of there. Uh, uh, Damajir is about to. Uh, she's about to unleash hell on uh, on those fuckers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll say three from the thrall and one from her. Can I so. also make an opportunity attack against uh, Lucky? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so they're gonna attack you with their axes, and I'm just gonna roll. One, two, and three. They all miss, but her turn with the flensing blades. Of which she gets four of those, so... Uh. <laughs> okay, so... Uh, miss. Miss. One hit. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. So she hits you once with the flensing blades <laughs> for uh, seven damage. So basically, you're running in to grab uh, you grab uh, Bronzy, and I'm gonna say you're you're big enough. You can throw him over your back if you wish, and uh, she's she's gonna give you a nice scar across your hind quarters as you're running. Yeah, yeah, I'll say you can do that. <laughs> yep. Yep. Perfect. <laughs> uh, Alright, so you, you brought Bronzy back. No, you he he's not that heavy. <laughs> he's four hundred seventy nine. <laughs> yeah, he's heavy. He's he's probably pushing about four hundred pounds of like just pure muscle, but he's not he's not like five hundred pounds. Okay. It's more of like his ability to project strength versus his actual like weight. <laughs> uh Z Zahario is aiming his gun and he looks over and or he's looking past the console and he says or he's looking at Gabriella excuse me and he says uh I am sorry and he fires <laughs> But he misses. Ah! The shot goes wide, and Gabriella she starts to laugh, and she holds her hand up again, and five more thrall are descending from the ceiling, while the other thrall, 
while the other Thrall are still waking up. However, <laughs> Felipe, your voice or the uh, your radio beeps again, and uh, Namajira says, "Are you clear, Felipe?" And the others. Uh, yeah, we are. Go ahead and uh, let her loose. <laughs> Roger that. Main guns primed. Auto cannon ready. <coughs> Shattering their sky. And f past the uh, bridge out into space, you see a flash. And suddenly, large cannon rounds just rip into the bridge of the ship. And they just start detonating all around. Uh, where the Thrall and the Sensor Bear and where Gabriella are all at. And for a brief moment, all of the air is sucked out uh, from the ship being exposed to vacuum, like the uh, the bridge. But then the autumn, the emergency, like, uh, the emergency system kicks in and large metal sheets descend to stop you all from being sucked out into space. And... What remains of what was the middle there is just shredded meat and mm. uh, bits and pieces. But you hear a coughing and a wheezing, and you see that Gabriella 32, though she's been cut in half, and most of her parts are gone, is still alive. And she says... Or, and she, she's sparking, and she's twitching, and she is, uh, she's spouting out, like, random words in binary, and then she says, So, hurry, El, you bastard. And so, Hariel approaches Gabriella, and, uh, again, in a very rare share, uh, show of human emotion, Zahariel looks down at Gabriella, and they say, Why would you do this, Gabriella 32? Why would you throw away not only your faith, but the lives of all of our fellow members and Gabriella 32 uh, she slowly whispers to Zahariel it's all a lie Zahariel and until you realize that you will blindly follow this dogma you will be blind to the truth and Zahariel shakes their head, and he extends out uh, the bladed mechadendrite arm, and they say, I don't know what brought you to this, sister, but I'm going to end it. And Zahariel plunges the mechadendrite into her skull and kills her. I go over and I, uh, I clasp, uh, Zahariel on the shoulder. There appears to be an error in my emotion, no, processors. I have deleted all positive emotions of Gabriella, but I still feel sadness and pity for her it uh it's only human ain't it i suppose no matter how much we try to separate ourselves from that side we can never truly cleanse it from our systems 
that is why I must continue to find my way through the motive force and finally become one with the machine god's teachings Oh my god, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, and I pull up my radio and I'm like, uh, uh, Nabajira, can we, uh, get a pickup? We're, uh, <laughs> I, I got everything squared away here, I think. Roger that, I will be landing in the docking area shortly, if you can make your way back there. Only enough time to redirect Art Majesty into the nearest star. And uh, that's gonna shut off the me the message too that uh, she's sending out, right? That is correct. No others will be drawn to this lie. Although she is dead, her scrap code still infests the air. Any who came here would be enthralled to her dead corpse. Therefore, I must commit the Ark Majesty to a final, full, holy purge. Yes, I will see you soon. <laughs> yep. Uh, Going with yeah, Felipe's thing. gonna wait for Zahario by the door until they're done, and then. Are you okay? Uh, so, you watch Zahario redirect the uh, or uh, fire up the ship's engines again and activate, and uh, it, he puts the or they put the uh. Uh, Vivi Horizon Drive on a countdown so that it will it will jump into the nearest star, and then you watch as Zahariel uh, grabs a pendant from Gabriella's corpse, and they quickly touch it or tuck it away into their their robes, and they walk towards you. A pendant, a pendant from her robes. Uh. Yeah, I'm just gonna. I'm not gonna ask anything. I'm just gonna <laughs> let that slide. Let us go. I will deposit your payment into your accounts when we make it back to In Winter's Grasp. Hopefully, they are out of the queue by the time we return. Oh God! Yeah, I hope so. Uh, you can sprawl them out on, like, the ground in the, uh, <laughs> in the <laughs> ship. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, you all board the ship, you lay out Bronzy's, uh, unconscious, yeah, corpse, his unconscious, his unconscious, no, his unconscious body, but you lay out his unconscious body, and Atra, uh, she lifts the ship off, and, uh, you take off out of the, uh, Ark Majesty, and as you're pulling away, you watch as it shudders, and then it jumps to faster than light speed. And uh, you hear a uh, you hear Zahariel 
plug themselves in to the ship and Zahario is beginning to enter low power mode but you chillingly you hear Zahario say deleting all records of the Ark Majesty and we will end it there <laughs> Ha 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 ha.